My name is Bradley Phillips. I am a professor of photography at Southeast Missouri State University. There are not as many weird tricks to food photography as you might imagine or as you might have maybe seen on a TikTok video. We do use a few things very regularly, but we're not using mashed potatoes for, instead of ice cream. Uh, uh, many of those little videos where they kind of say, oh, you just need to microwave a ball of paper towels and hide it behind your mug to get steam don't work as well as you might think. It, it's real food, we photograph real food and there are ways to kind of manipulate it into looking better or optimize how it looks in front of a camera. But I would say 99% of what we do is, is real. Um, it may not be as appetizing by the time we're done photographing it um, because that's been manhandled. Um, by many people, but I don't know that there are that many tricks. The process of food photography really starts with the conceptual idea of what it is you wanna present in your image. And we work backwards from there. So we say, oh, we want a sandwich. And what do you eat with a sandwich? How do we present this? Where do we want the sandwich to be? Are we in a restaurant? Are we on a park bench? Are we you know, at home, are we making a sandwich next to the sink and we're just gonna eat it over the sink? What do we want this to look like? So we create an environment that mimics a certain sense of how those places feel. Shooting in a studio is kind of like working with a blank canvas. Nothing's gonna be in here that you don't put in here. So if you want it to feel like a kitchen, then you have to go through the trouble of bringing the kitchen into the studio. The, the process isn't that complicated. It's, it's practice and, you know, honing a skill. Going into doing photography, I never thought I would like doing products because I just, I don't know, I usually get annoyed by seeing advertisements, but actually doing the work behind it is a lot of fun. I mean, seeing the sandwich being made, you never really expect to see all that goes into a photo until you're actually on set and it, it takes a lot of work and uh, it's kind of wild to, I guess, pull up with a bunch of ingredients and then just craft like a masterpiece that's something you actually like feel proud of making. That doesn't always happen, but whenever it does come out, it's, it's a really good feeling to see. Okay, so acrylic ice is definitely something that's almost necessary to be in the studio for food photography because regular ice, unless you like, I've heard boiling it and then freezing it, it's never gonna be clear. It's never gonna look like how you want it to look in the photo. It's always gonna be cloudy and kind of like, you know, it's, you have to deal with it melting. There's a melting point, obviously, it's gonna melt really fast. And then the oil, we use oil a lot in food photography just because it makes things shine. It gives them a glisten. Oil is something that is like a, I guess like a little cheat you could use to make things look nicer than they naturally appear. Not many regular people would think to rub a strawberry with oil. I guess there's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that you don't expect. A lot of people probably just think like you just cook a burger, put it on a plate and it's just amazing. Like it just looks great and it really doesn't. It's really hard to do. I mean, even with the ones you would see at McDonald's and stuff, a lot of that stuff might be painted on or like there's toothpicks holding it up just to the perfect spot to where you like, it just looks amazing. When in reality, you know when you see that, it doesn't ever match up to that quality. It's just making things look better than real life almost. Personally, I try to pride myself on never using fake elements in a photo, for food especially, just because I think it's kind of like a cop-out. Like, I feel like you should always aim to make everything as realistic as possible, unless it's like something that really doesn't matter, like a background piece of the photo I guess could be fake, but like the actual dish itself needs to be real, and that's something I aim to do every time. It's just something about like, it actually working out, just crafting something you've always wanted to bring to the world that just didn't exist before. That's one of my things is I have a lot of ideas and I struggle to make them come to life. But whenever I do make them to come to life, it's a surreal feeling you get, you know. Very rarely do people understand the production value required to get a specific quality. You know, you either take your time and do it right and get it to look the way you want it to or you rush through it and it looks like it was taken on a cell phone. But I think that if we had a game plan from the get-go and we had all of our props 
we could have made that sandwich and shot it in under two hours. People don't get it. They're like, I have a phone, I can, I can shoot video with my phone. I don't know, what's the big deal? Why does it take so long? They're like, Green, you take a picture of the sandwich. <laughs> you know, if we take a glass, a rocks glass, and we put a fake ice cube in it, and we pour apple juice on top of that, if it looks like whiskey, does it matter in the end? I don't think it does.